1968, my second son, who was about 18 years old, said that he was gay. My son actually first came out as a lesbian. In August of 1988, she came out to us, and I had no idea what she was talking about. My first reaction was that he's not gay, he's just going through a teenage folly. And we sent him to a psychologist to cure him. I kept begging her to change her mind so we wouldn't get in trouble with grandparents and everyone else. I was afraid that my son would not be accepted. I was afraid he would continue to live in a world that would judge him, discriminate against him, and lash out in a violent way. My only reaction was that my girl next door type daughter would suddenly be an object of bigotry or discrimination, and that was not okay with me. I became depressed, and I was not functioning well because I didn't know what to do. At that time, I didn't know where to turn. I spent a lot of time kind of self-reflecting and trying to get educated. After my wife and I got used to the idea of having a gay son and not feeling bad about it, we thought the main purpose of our organization was to allay the fears and the angers and the upset of other parents who just recently found out that one of their children was gay. PFLAG was the answer to my problems. I discovered PFLAG for the first time uh, very soon after April 1997 when Ellen famously came out on her sitcom. I joined PFLAG right away and just loved it. If somebody at the meeting said to me, you're in a place where um, you're going to be nurtured and we're going to support you and we're going to love you and your family's going to make it through. Oh yes, once I went to Beef Flag, I began to, to sing around the house and say lesbian and it didn't bother me because lesbian was a good word and it was an important word for me to know. As I continued to work with other people and hear their stories of how they overcame challenges, then that brought more hope to my heart. The most important project that the Lavender Effect is, is working on right now is its oral history project. We need to have a record of the progress that we're all making through the years and to have this forever. The intent is to capture the testimony from the pioneer, from the, the person who was in, in the trenches doing the work to educate the world to end homophobia. I think that information that we're capturing is so important to have in our archives and for people to be able to listen to and, and see. Documenting and sharing these oral histories will have a powerful impact on our community. Those who, who might feel marginalized, when they can, can listen to oral histories, it can inspire that person to, to be stronger and to accomplish more themselves.